What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. That's right, it's that time of the week again where we get you ready for the weekend with a brand new coil build. So this is actually a reshoot of last week's video. I had some technical difficulties, and I was not able to get that one out to you guys last week. But here it is in all its glory. I've got this ginormous, humongous, Jurassic Fuse Clapton, which is another request by you guys out there. Keep them coming. Make sure you drop me comments in the box below if you want to see me do something on a Fresh Build Friday video. But with that, you guys wanted a bigger fuse clapton so i've got the 22 gauge fuse clapton for you guys today should be a lot of fun so grab your tools your wick your addy your wire or your juice all that good stuff let's go down to the close-up view and build it up all right guys so i've got my 22 gauge regular old canthal wire here that's what we're going to be using today and we've got some 36 gauge nichrome 80 so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is just straighten out about a foot uh, section of this 22 gauge real quick. All right, now that that's good and straight, what I'm going to do is bring in our little jig thing here that we got our spinners on and thread that right through. Then I'm going to bend it around, try to find the halfway point here and do another little 90 degree, 90 degree bend on this side here. When I've got that, I'm just gonna open up the check of my drill once again. And put that wire right in there. Should fit pretty nicely. Just like that. Now I wanna tighten this one down really tight. Smooth out our core wire a little bit here and then bend it right where it sits on the end piece on our spinners here. Just tighten that down a little bit with our pliers to make a nice crease. We bring out our 36 gauge wire, which we're going to be claptoning with. I find the easiest way to get the claptoning process started is just kind of Slide the wire right in there and you can use one of the little legs to do a few little wraps around like that. Once you get it to that point, just spin it a couple of times and it actually should just uh, be good to go. It's going to have a nice, enough tension where you don't have to worry about it slipping out or anything like that. So, next step is claptoning. All right guys, so I've got my three millimeter bit on my jig here and we're just gonna be wrapping this around the outside. I feel like this wire is gonna be a little bit too chunky to go through uh, the full jig here. So we're just gonna do six wraps today. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have my leads facing away from each other because today we are going to be building on this guy right here, which is the Dually RDA by Rigmod. Um, I've been really dying to put a new build in this thing. I haven't built this one in a while, so I figured why not break it out? We'll see if we can uh, build this thing up. All right, so this one here, um, the way I like to build it is just kind of by putting the coil in one side here and just getting it in there real quick like that. And this wire is nice and rigid so it actually holds up really well um, to some abuse. So you can kind of move it around and work with it a little bit and it's going to be able to handle it no problem. So I'm just going to kind of pull it tight with my pliers on this side here while I tighten it down with my screwdriver. Let me just grab that. So I'm going to hold it with my pliers as I tighten it with my screwdriver. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Like that. Tighten it down. There we go. It's got a good hold there. And the next thing I'm going to do, actually I'm just going to trim this wire really quick. Just like that. 
Next thing I'm gonna do is actually come in from this side with the old jig so I can bend up this lead wire to fit in that post. And if you have to trim it at this point, it's no big deal. Um, you might have to just cut a little bit off like so. Boo! Watch your eyes when you do that. And uh, yeah, just kind of get this one facing in the right direction um, because you're gonna have to put a little bit of force behind this here. Don't really worry about the cleanliness too much at this stage because you're gonna be cleaning it up again pretty soon anyways. Just gonna clip a little bit more off like that. And honestly, if you have to use your pliers with this here, not a big deal. That's what I like to do. Just put a little force behind it. Make sure it's going in the right spot there. And yeah, just kind of work it through that other post hole. And once you get it through, you can tighten it down. All right, so now that I have this one tightened down, I can just go ahead and trim this wire here. Boo! And straighten up our coil a little bit. So this is gonna take a little bit of elbow grease because this wire, like I said, very rigid, very tough to maneuver around. But we shall persevere, get it worked out, and we can get some heat going on. It's actually looking pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that spot. Maybe a little bit further this way. Eh, that's pretty good, I like that. So the next step, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of heat. I've got my mod set at 45 watts. I've got my ceramic tweezers, which we're gonna use to just gently strum the coils. A little bit here, we're just gonna start kind of pulsing that wire, heating it up a little bit just to work out any uh, hot spots or anything like that. Just kind of brush it across. And already we're looking pretty good. Honestly, I thought this was gonna take a little bit more work, but I think, um, I think we're looking pretty good here already. Let's just kind of brush it a couple more times, making sure it stays nice and tight, exactly where we want it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's uh, raise it up to 75 watts for our kind of mid-level wattage test. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about that. I, I, don't, I don't see the problem. Yeah, I think we're looking good. Um, I'm just going to hit it one more time at our final wattage, which is... Gonna be about a hundred watts here, I think. Hit it at a hundred watts. There we go. And it's glowing pretty nice. Pretty happy with that. Let's go and see some vapor production. All right, let's, let's turn our mod back on here. Come on, there we go. And see some vapor production. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Looking good. So let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, we've reached the point of the video where we talk about the coil that we just built. So my first category, as always, is the heat. And to be honest with you, the heat at 100 watts was a little bit too much for me. Um, I was starting to get a few little dry hits, and it just wasn't too comfortable for me. So I ended up turning it down to 80 watts, uh, 5.2 volts at 0.34 ohms. This is a 0.34 ohm single coil on the dually atomizer. And right here 
it's my comfort zone. It's where I like it. It's a nice warm vapor. It's not too hot and I'm not getting any dry hits now. So that is definitely A-OK -okay in my book. So with that, I think I'm going to leave it right around this area. Um, I might end up bumping it maybe up to 85 or something like that, but I don't think I can handle 100 watts on a single coil. But with that, moving on to the ramp up and ramp down time. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and check that out. I'll have a drag off of this thing and we'll check it out. So to be honest, the ramp up time is a little bit more than I was expecting. I am using Canthal as the cores, and I got a few comments on my Jumbo Fuse Clapton saying that uh, it might be because I'm using Canthal as the cores that I'm getting such a long ramp up time. It's about a full second before I get a big full on uh, lung inhale to it, but with that, I think the ramp down time is a little bit more aggressive as well. So uh, it kind of sizzles for about two to three seconds uh, at a, like a kind of a high sizzle, and then it just mellows out into almost nothing for another two to three seconds. So for the ramp down time, I'm getting a total of about a six second ramp down time, which is a bit much for me. I feel like that's gonna be eating up a little bit more juice than I was uh, originally intending for it to. But with that, it's not so bad. I think I can manage with uh, a little bit more ramp down time considering the amount of juice that you can actually fill with this dually here. You can actually fit a lot of juice in the uh, well here. So with that, I don't think it's too bad, but again, it's a pretty long ramp down time. So just be prepared for that. Um, if I were to build this one again in the future, I might seek out some 22 gauge nichrome wire for the cores. It will bring down the resistance a little bit, but then I could use it at a little bit higher wattage and then uh, possibly uh, eliminate a little bit of that ramp up time. Not sure about uh, the ramp down time, however, because I feel like the uh, core wires are so large that it's just kind of holding that heat in there and that fusing uh, with the 36 gauge is definitely kind of just holding that heat in there even more. So there's a lot of heat to this, this uh, particular coil. Not a, not a huge issue for me, but uh, I guess it's something to look out for if you're planning on doing this on something with a smaller juice well. My third category is the difficulty of this build. Just like any other Fuse Clapton, if you can manage a regular Clapton, if you can manage twisted wire and stuff like that, then you can probably manage a fused Clapton. Honestly, I think I've pretty much mastered the technique at this point. Uh, I'm able to do a whole strand without making too many mistakes, and it came out really well the first shot, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, anyone that can manage just a normal standard coil or anything like that should definitely, absolutely, 100% learn uh, the fused Clapton technique, because I think, in my personal opinion, it is seriously the best coil I've ever tried. So, definitely give it a shot if you haven't already. I feel like um, am amateur builders all the way up to kind of like the moderate level where I, you know, consider myself um, definitely should be able to handle this one no problem. In my final category, the flavor. Well, today I'm vaping some of this Delish. This is a blackberry ice cream flavor. And to me, it tastes like soft serve ice cream with like that blackberry syrup that they put in there. And it is fantastic. I got to say, the flavor is really good on this one. It's just uh, a slight under par as far as a Fuse Clapton is concerned. I don't think it has as good a flavor as my standard build, but it's pretty close. It's up there in the same kind of category. Uh, definitely better than a lot of the standard round wire builds that I've done in the past. This one, um, just, it's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. I get the full flavor out of it. I'm getting, you know, that blackberry, that sweetness, that tartness, and then I get that cream from the ice cream flavor all in one. Um, very nice exhale to this one. But yeah, overall, very satisfied with this one. So that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Of course, leave me comments in the box below about anything you want to talk about, whether it be this build or a future episode of Fresh Build Friday or anything like that. Make sure you drop it down there. I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Also, check out the advocacy links I have in the description. I've got them down there for you so you can fight for your right to vape. And check me out on my different social medias. I've got Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you follow me on there. Like my page on Facebook. Check out my Snapchat. Chat. And if you want to give me a couple bucks on Patreon, that would be awesome as well. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, vape on.